Good day, everyone. I am Virgo Clemente Lopez from Pan Pacific University, and it's my pleasure to share with you my study with the title School-Based Resilience Leadership Framework for Principals in Times of Disaster. For the background, this study is anchored on several studies about schools being prone to all types of disasters, whether it is human-induced or man-made and natural. This is according to Yusof et al. of 2000. 22. Likewise, disasters uh, are known to result or lead to destruction, disruptions, and displacements in school settings. This is according to Khan et al. of 2020. Now, with these scenarios, education leaders, the principals, play a great role in modeling resilience in managing emergency situations, such as the different types of disasters, according to Potter et al. of 2020. And in doing so, there's a need for us to have sustainable and resilient models and practices to enhance capacity and adaptability for school-based disaster prevention. Uh, and it is becoming more important than ever, according to Wang et al. of 2020. The statement of the problem are the following for number one, what are the human-induced or man-made and natural disasters in schools experienced by the principals? For number two, what are their strategic practices in resilience leadership? in the different phases of disaster that includes pre-disaster, during disaster, and post-disaster. And finally, what school-based resilience leadership framework for principles in times of disaster can be proposed? So the research paradigm could be seen on the screen, and this would be the focus and the reference of the entire study. For the methodology, I utilize qualitative research, specifically narrative analysis. The local and population, there are two, four, six um, regions in the Philippines that I have considered uh, the Cordillera Administrative Region, the Capital Region, Calabarzon, Bicol, Eastern Visayas, and the Barn in Mindanao. The participants, I have two. The main participants include 10 principals that met the criteria. They should be principal for at least three years, and they should have an experience in leading and managing disasters. And the additional participants, six of them, are non-principals. They are the NBRRM coordinators Deputy project development officers, and some of the stakeholders and partners in man managing these disasters. Furthermore, the, the research instrument would be the semi-structured interviews conducted. The data management includes coding and content analysis with thematic approach. And for ethical considerations, I ensure the informed consent was obtained and privacy and confidentiality were ensured. For the summary of the results in discussion, uh, shown right now would be the concept map of themes and sub-themes. To specify, the narratives of principles include both the shared experiences in their lens on how they manage and the practices in leading resilience in times of these um, emergency situations. For um, the specification for shared experiences, the human-induced crisis include the fire, the plane industry, flaming destruction and conflict displacement. And for natural catastrophes, it include earthquake, pandemic, typhoon, volcanic eruptions as disruptions. For the practices employed, there's, there was a need for the principals to refocus on prevention by empowering school stakeholders through capacity and capability building in pre-disaster phase. Meanwhile, for during the disaster, there, there was the reinforcement of proactive actions that include enhancing contextualization and culture of bayanihan or the collaboration among the citizens or the population. And finally, for the post-disaster, there was a need to enact commitment to build back better in post-disaster. This would be the reintegration of sustainable solutions. And so with that, all of these narratives or sharing are the references of the school-based resilience leadership framework that is being proposed. So the proposed framework look like this. For the details, it could be seen that during disaster or pre-disaster phase, there's a need to um, increase the awareness through capacity and capability building of all concern from the students, parents, and other stakeholders. For during disaster, there's a need for agility or the flexibility and adaptability to contextualize culture of Bayanihan. Finally, after the disaster, adaptation would include the uh, commitment to build back better. So this is how the proposed uh, framework is, uh, the, the details rather of the proposed framework. And the conclusions, principles indeed experience different disasters. Uh, they model resilience in the different phases. And the relevant findings of the study 
became the reference of the school-based resilience leadership framework to be utilized. Recommendations include, we need to learn from the valuable lessons from the experiences of the principals. We have to benchmark from their strategic practices. We should continue to cultivate resilience leadership. We are to invest more in the continuous improvement of disaster mitigation and prevention, and we have to undergo additional training and development. Further, we need to prioritize the RRM programs and activities. We have to improve communication and coordination, and we have to be guided by the school-based resilience leadership framework. There should be an inclusion and integration of resilience leadership concepts and theories in courses of teacher education institutions. And finally, research more and collaborate to explore transilience leadership, which is an emerging um, term or concept in my entire study. These are my references and for collaboration and communication, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you very much.